What's going on Master Duel fans, James Polk here, and of course, 22,000 points reached in this anti-spell festival, and all I can say is, uh, what a wild ride this is. Uh, anywho, when it comes to the two days worth of anti-spell dueling experience, um, all I can say is this whole anti-spell festival is absolutely insane. So out of all the decks in the world to rock out with would be Amazonas. And of course, this is the synchro variant of Amazonas because I've been a huge fan of the archetype for a very long time. And it made me think this is one of the archetypes that has like forgotten in its uh, existence. And it made me think, you know what? I'd say it's that time for me to bring back one of those lost archetypes into this anti-spell festival. And I'm actually glad that I made the uh, right call to take on the uh, top decks as well as some of the pristine, never before seen stuff. Uh, anywho, let's get to the deck list that you're all been waiting for. So for the Amazonist cards, you have two baby tigers. Anyone can play one or three, but I find uh, three can be like way too much and one is not enough. So it made me think uh, two baby tigers is literally the right number. And when it comes to Amazonist Baby Tiger, its name is Amazonist Tiger while it's on the field or graveyard. And then if an Amazonist monster is no more special to your field while this card is in your hand or graveyard, special this card. And it's a special summon effect that is once per turn. To Amazonist Spy, when it comes to Amazonist Spy, you can reveal one other Amazonist monster in your hand, uh, another copy of Spy included to special summon the Spy herself. And when this card gets killed by battle and sent to the graveyard, target one Amazonist monster in your graveyard except Spy, either add it to the hand or shuffle it back into the deck. Three, Amazonist Princess. This is the card that you want to see the most because first off, her name is Amazonist Queen while she's on the field or graveyard. But the realest reason why you want to see her the most is because if this card is no more special, she lets you add one Amazonist spell trap from deck to hand. Most cases, Amazonist trap from deck to hand because this is anti spell festival. And then the search effect is once per turn. And then her secondary effect is not once per turn, which is whenever she swings, I can send one other card from my hand or field to the graveyard that isn't the copy itself. A special summon one Amazonist monster from the deck in defense that isn't princess. So generally the idea is if you see any of the traps and if you're able to take commanding position, then you should be fine from the get go especially in any board state is where if you already have a uh, princess and baby tiger on board you basically go baby tiger to attack first then princess sending the baby tiger to the grave special any one of the amazonists and then have the baby tiger return to the field so that the same copy of baby tiger can attack again which is ridiculous and then for the one ofs in terms of amazonist monsters Amazon is Swordswoman. Your opponent takes any battle damage involving her in battles. Amazon is Fighter. No battle damage involving Fighter. Amazon is Paladin. Extra 100 attack for every Amazon is monster I control. Amazon is Tiger. One Amazon is Tiger at a time. Extra 400 attack for each Amazonist monster I control and monsters 
Your opponent controls cannot go after Amazonist monsters for attacks, except the OG Tiger. And speaking of the Tiger, my apologies on that last side effect, as most uh, forgot about, including me, is that Baby Tiger also gains extra 100 attack for each Amazonist card in your graveyard, spells and traps included. Amazonist Sage, my favorite, because at the end of the damage step, if this card attack and is still alive on the field, target one spell trap, most cases trap, card your opponent controls, kill it. So generally the idea with Sage is that in any matchup specifically against uh, either burn decks or Time Lord burn in general, if you have the onslaught trap with Sage on board, it makes it so that uh, Sage swing over their monster, Onslaught activates to banish the Time Lord, and then Sage gets her destruction effect off, which is insanely broke. And the return of Amazonist Queen. No Amazonist monster can't be killed by battle, including the big queen herself. As for the, the Synchro package, to Dusk or Dawnwalkers, Askator, Dawnwalkers, and then two Supe Duskwalkers. And then when it comes to the the Dawn and Duskwalkers, during the turn I use either of those effects, I'm locked into Synchros. I can discard one card, special summon this card itself in defense, then Dawnwalker, who specifically specials Fire Ant Askator from the hand or deck. And as for Fire Ant or Fire Ant Askator, when this card gets killed by battle and sent to the graveyard, target one level five monster in your graveyard, special summon that target, but its effects are negated. It can still attack, by the way. Also, send it to the graveyard during the end phase of this turn. And then Duskwalker, on the other hand, special herself and then specifically get Supe from the hand or deck to the field. When this card is sent from field to graveyard by card effect, special one Oracle of the Sun from your deck, and if you do, double its attack. Also, return it to the hand during the end phase. So, side note, no Oracle of the Sun for one. And second of all, uh, no Call of the Reaper because I literally cannot find space to fit in the card. And then as for the hand traps, two Ashes, two DD Crows, two Ghost Ogres, and one Ghost Bell. The one Ghost Bell, it worked out pretty well, but at the same time, it's where I felt like in the anti-spell festival, she's pretty much out of the format now, but at the same time, it's where like, if they have cards or effects in terms of monsters or trap effects that utilizes the effects that deals with banishing stuff, that isn't cost, by the way, Bell can be that game changer in any best of one because no one ever expects Bell in the best of one format same goes for dd crow as well which is super super strong as a versatile hand trap that is 28 monsters and then the rest is 12 traps the traps are as follows triple copies of evenly match you gotta have it if you are ever expected to see super back row formats. You gotta have it. One Solemn Judgment, it's limited to one in Anti-Spell. Two Solemn Strikes, it's semi-limited to two in Anti-Spell Festival. And then as for the Amazonist Traps, two Amazonist Willpower. Willpower is your Call of the Haunted for Amazonist monsters. The twist is, it cannot change its battle position, and it must attack if able to. Three 
Amazon is Onslaught, you must see this card at all times because most decks in general that they have are either A, anti-target, B, cannot be killed by effects, or C, monsters that have the saving grace ability. With the help of Princess searching it out, you must max out on this card so that you are able to see. If you do not see this card at all times, you're going to lose. Anywho, as for Onslaught, once per turn during the battle phase, special summon one Amazonist monster from your hand, and if you do, it gains extra 500 attack until the end of this turn, even if it leaves. And then the secondary effect is not once per turn, it does not target, it does not destroy. After damage calculation, if your Amazonist monster battle an opponent's monster while this card is already face up in your spell trap zone, you can banish that opponent's monster. And then the third effect is not once per turn, if this card on the field gets killed and sent to the graveyard, target one Amazonist monster in my graveyard, special it back out. And the best card that I saved for last, and it literally saved me defensively three separate times and two times on the extension. Amazonist Shamanism. When it comes to Amazonist Shamanism, destroy all Amazonist monsters I control, then special summon level four or lower Amazonist monsters from your graveyard in face of defense up to the number of monsters destroyed by this effect. So in this context, the more Amazon Amazonist monsters you have in a grind game state, it's basically soul charge of level four or lower Amazonist monsters. As for the extra deck, Goyo Guardian, this card came up only once or twice throughout the whole entire anti-spell festival. This card is pretty, pretty good, especially the fact that if uh, monsters that are the range of over 25, but not lower than the 28, I believe so. Either way, if it's over 25 yet less than 29, you should be in a pretty good spot to have Goyo Guardian steal the destroyed monsters and able to take command position or take control of the field at that rate. Naturia Barkion. This is the best card in the extra deck. The game instantly ends. As soon as you make Barkion, the game is literally over. Uh, when it comes to Naturia Barkion, he must remain face up at all times in order for his effect to work. Not once per turn, when a trap card is activated, no matter whose, and not the effect of the trap card, but the trap card is activated, as a quick effect, banish two cards from grave, negate the activation, and if you do, kill it. As in, not once. Moon Dragon Keela, this was basically the synchro food or the fodder for Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. But at the same time, uh, in terms of on-field board presence, he was never used, ever. So when it comes to Moon Dragon Keela, if this card is targeted for an attack, gain life equal to half of the attacking monster's attack. If this card on the field gets killed in any shape or form, target and reborn Sun Dragon NT. And speaking of Sun Dragon NT, there he is. If this card gets killed by battle and sent to the graveyard, destroy the monster that just killed it, and if you do, burn your opponent equal to half of the attack of that monster had on the field. And then once per turn during the next standby phase, or during the standby phase of the next turn, after this card on the field gets killed, target a reborn Moon Dragon Keela. So essentially, if you're in a stalling position, these two, the sun and moon monsters, these two can loop each other. Celestial Wolf Lord Blue Sirius. 
this synchro monster did not come up at all because I expected games where if there are ever any monsters that are at least higher than 3000 attack now's the time to make blue serious find a way to destroy it as in crashing it by battle most of the time just so that his effect goes off which is target one face up monster your opponent controls it loses 2400 attack perma loss so it makes it so that literally any monster in the game can just straight up ran over. Stardust Charge Warrior for the sake of the draw card. The draw card effect comes up quite a lot. And then swinging over special summon monsters, your opponent controls once each. Uh, that effect as a continuous effect, that continuous effect came up only one time in testing but in the actual event it never came up if a dawn drakesta uh this used to be i believe it was flanville uruquizas the level six fire flanville synchro that does pierce by the damage dawn drakester used to be flanville uruquizas because at first I said to myself, we already got the uh, the damage control cover. But the only thing that I uh, realized was that we need something that deals with not only spell trap negates. Also, as an actual monster, that is something that people forgot about in this day and age. Is that obviously as an FA, gains attack off from its level times three so he'll be 21 by default and then as an actual monster effect or as an actual monster card this is something people forgot about if this card attacks a defense monster pierce battle damage and then uh it's other effect about fa spells and traps being active increase the level by one but no fa spells and traps that effect is uh, irrelevant and then its real effect when it comes to the meta game is that once per turn during either player's turn is a quick effect when your opponent activates a spell trap effect or spell trap card or the effect of the spell trap reduce the levels by two negate the activation and if you do destroy it which is ridiculous colossal fighter this card only came up once and it stole me a game because i have too many warriors in the graveyard gains 100 attack for each warrior monster in the graveyards both players graveyards by the way and when this card gets killed by battle and sent to the graveyard target one warrior monster in either graveyard special summon it so basically colossal fighter is the monster reborn of warriors no matter what level it is draco berserker of the tangy this is the I consider myself the one of the second best uh, synchros in terms of interruptions because the way how Berserker really is in this uh, anti-spell format is if I expect to see monsters that are uh, not higher than 3000 but close to in this context if it ever kills an effect monster by battle and sends to the graveyard it gains that much attack equal to the destroyed monsters original attack also it gets to make a second attack on a monster in a row during that same battle phase and on top of that it's where any given time where if your opponent is about to activate a monster effect as a quick effect even though the only thing sucks is that it does not negate it but it ends up banished that effect comes up too many times to count ram the magistus divinity dragon uh he was only made once the idea about Vram being made is that if this synchro summon card gets killed in any shape or form, he can destroy all face up cards your opponent controls, spells and traps included. Most cases in anti spell format, uh, monsters and traps in terms of face ups. And then the rest of the effects, uh, does not ever come up at all because no Magisa stuff, which is really irrelevant. 
Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. This is the best control version of the extra deck. No questions asked about Hot Red. Or as I like to call him, one of those do not let this synchro hit you because when Hot Red does battle demonstrate your opponent, target one tuner in your graveyard, any shape or form of a tuner, special summon it in defense. And then the quick effect, we all know what's up with Hot Red about the face up card your opponent controls, Omni negated, spell trap included. And then that's pretty much all of the synchros I play. And out of all the synchros being seen, um, all of them except Blue Sirius was made. So he's most likely gonna get cut for sure. And if I were to come across this scenario where if I expect to have Hot Red Abyss take the damage yeah take the damage to the opponent so that hot red revive the fire ant just so i can go into final sigma and random fun fact by the way is that uh when it comes to hot red on the battle damage when it comes to taking tuners from the grave hot red can also revive the ghost ogre because most people don't know is that ghost ogres effect legit works on the field as well because most of the time like 99% of those times where whenever ghost ogre activates it usually activates from the hand just to catch people off guard but most cases hot red reviving ghost ogre just to make sure that on my opponent's turn if i expect to see a monster effect or something already uh face up activates we can just send a, a ghost ogre that we brought back to the grave so that the car gets killed and on top of that it's basically where if i'm in a board state where uh if there was nothing to lock my opponent out of then it's pretty much hot red take ghost ogre and it just keep on constantly destroying stuff and then for the Lynx, Mrs. Radiant, card comes up all the time, Durumadol, best Link ever printed, Alsa, super nice, Mrs. Radiant here, uh, buffs up all Earths by 500 attack and defense, and the wind uh, decreases extremely irrelevant unless your name is a starter's charge warrior he'd be at 16 because loss of 400 attack and defense so 16 attack and 900 defense but the win debuffs does not matter unless you're going up against something that's like super windy based that debuff does matter and then the last effect is if this card gets killed by battle or card effect target one earth monster in your graveyard literally any earth Add it back to your hand, which is nice. Drumadol, best link ever printed. If you are wondering how I can make Drumadol in this deck, that would be the likes of the two baby tigers. The one actual tiger. Don't ever bring out baby tiger back to the field whenever big tiger is around. And Mrs. Radiant. Extra 100 attack for each beast, beast, warrior, and wing beast everywhere on the field. And then soft once per turn he's basically a scrap dragon of spells and traps so that way you could pop your amazonist onslaughts to literally revive any of your amazonist monster or you could just like also pop your dead uh amazonist willpower so that you can free up the room for turning on evenly match in your if you're in a losing position and on top of that Whenever Durumadol kills a monster by battle, you can target one of your Beast Beast Warrior and Wing Beast Monster that is banished during your graveyard, add it back to the hand. So that would be the likes of Mrs. Radiant, Large Tiger, Baby Tiger, and I almost forgot about Blue Sirius 
being a beast warrior because this is something that I legit almost overlooked. And all I can say is what a wild card this is. And then uh, Velma, we know what's up with Velma because I obviously play Charmers. So there's not much explanation to say about it. And then out of all of the search targets in the deck when it comes to Velma, Supe, Baby Tiger, Fire Ant, Fighter, Swordswoman, Princess, Spy, Paladin, Tiger, Sage, Dawnwalker, and that's pretty much the majority of the, uh, the targets. And then Mech Knight, Crusadia, Avermax. Generally, the idea is that I make Osa first, Osa, Steel, and Earth, and then as long as I control another monster, and hopefully if it's Earth, so Osa, Steel, and Earth, and then control another uh, Earth monster, make Mrs. Radiant, and then two monsters from the extra deck, Mad Knight, Crusader, uh, Avermax. Uh, he actually came up only once, and this card is absolutely ridiculous. And then uh, the one time in the one match, I believe it was against a super spicy amazement attraction deck, I believe it was, where the opponent played pinpoint dash thinking that we're both going to call on the same type for the extra because most of the stuff I have in the extra deck are synchros. But what my opponent doesn't know during that uh, match is that I have Link Monsters as well. So to psych my opponent out thinking he's going to pull up a Synchro, I'm called on Avramax and then was able to get him out for free, which is ridiculous. And then nothing to say about Avramax. We know what's up with Avramax because the last place I remember about seeing Avramax was in my Sofa Core build. And with that being said, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this wonderful, amazing deck profile of Amazon and Synchro. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And hit that notification bell to keep yourself constantly updated. And I'll catch you guys at the next event.